It's 20 past the hour. Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon has just become the first and only U.S. Senator to endorse his colleague Bernie Sanders for president. Senator Merkley announced his endorsement in a New York Times op-ed this morning, writing, quote, it is time to recommit ourselves to that vision of a country that measures our nation's success not at the boardroom table, but at kitchen tables across America. Bernie Sanders stands for that America, so I stand with Bernie Sanders for president. And Senator Jeff Merkley joins us now here on the set. Also, good morning, good, good to have morning. you. Good morning, great to Also with you. us on the set in Washington, national correspondent for Bloomberg Business Week and political columnist for the Boston Globe, Josh Green. So Thank you, I guess we begin with Bernie Sanders and what, first of all, um, I mean, is this late in the game to endorse, or are you right on time? What well, was the this decision is, this process? This is just the right time for Oregon. Uh, Oregon has a, a vote by mail. The right. ballots get mailed out on the 28th of this month, and so this is... Uh, um, Do you think he can win? Moment. I think that anything's possible in a in a campaign. Obviously, the the the, the math is an uphill climb, uh, but we've been surprised by what happens in campaigns time and time again. So why did you uh, why are you swimming against the political tide and becoming the first senator to endorse Bernie Sanders? Because this really is is all about the person who has the boldest, most fierce vision on the biggest issues facing America and, and the world. Uh, certainly, that's true in terms of uh, international trade. Uh, Bernie under understands that these trade treaties uh, where we compete with people earning as little as a dollar an hour have done enormous damage to leverage of American workers, have shipped a tremendous number of jobs overseas. He's fought for health care. The, the expansion of the federally qualified health centers was really his baby and the Affordable uh, Care Act. Uh, he has proceeded uh, to really be a wonderful leader for, for veterans. Uh, and certainly on when it comes to global warming, uh, he is the person who understands that if we are going to take this on, and it's a moral responsibility for our generation on this planet, that we have to leave the vast bulk of fossil fuels in the ground. Issue after issue, campaign yep. finance, he's been out there leading clearly long before he ever decided to run. David? Senator, let me ask you the question that I think many people have, in particular after the Daily News interview with, with uh, uh, Bernie Sanders of a week ago. The, People wonder if he has mastered the details of his proposals enough so that he could really tell you, this is how I'm going to break up the big banks. This is how I'm going to change the economy. Because reading that interview, there were an awful lot of silences after the tough questions about how to do it uh, were raised. And, and you wondered, you know, maybe Hillary Clinton's claim, I know how to do these things, deserves more attention. Well, uh, certainly, uh, you've got to judge someone by the totality of their record. And uh, he's put forward a number of detailed proposals. He backed the Volcker rule, uh, which took the gambling out of Wall Street. He backed the amendment to cap the, the share of deposits that the, any single big bank could have. Uh, he backed the uh, increased levels of capital required if you're a significant financial institution. Uh, so uh, it, perhaps that interview wasn't the moment that he put on display he the details. He said what you just said. He would have had a better interview. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure he's thought about that. Uh, many, many times since then. So, Josh Green, now to you, and why we shouldn't uh, underestimate Ted Cruz. It's something Mika does every day. I yeah. don't. I just think his oratory is. is well, what's what struck me about Ted Cruz, what I say in this column, is essentially that we made the same analytical mistake DC insiders did with Cruz in 2016 as we did with Hillary Clinton in 2008, only in reverse. You know, back then, right. Clinton was assumed to be the inevitable Democratic nominee. Uh, I got called mean names by Clinton people whenever I expressed doubt about that in print, and lo and behold, she went on to lose the nomination. I argue that one of the reasons that people haven't really woken up to the Cruz challenge until recently is that he's so despised in Washington by his own colleagues in the Senate um, that, that people didn't realize he really is an acceptable conservative to most of the Republicans out there in the country, and we may see that come to fruition. But if nobody Cleveland. likes him and he can't work with anybody, how, how exact? I mean, everyone's trying to stop Trump, pushing Cruz in there. Do they know what they're doing? Because... He hasn't got a great track record. I don't think anybody in the, in, in the Republican Party knows what they're doing these days. But but when the imperative is just to stop Trump, Cruz, Cruz is the most attractive weapon. And organized. So, exactly. Well, he's, he's, he's organized. He's shown strategic capacity. And while he wouldn't be the first, second, or third choice of most Republicans in Washington, he's really the only viable option they've got to stop Trump. With the Josh, I, I agree with your column. Let me ask you something. 
there hasn't been a lot of focus on Cruz's ideas. Mm -hmm. Are things like a national sales tax, is that going to cause problems for him, being not for any exception for rape uh, on abortion or roll back the clock? It may uh, help him in some... I think it would cause huge problems. And one reason why Washington insider types were so down on his candidacy originally, I mean, he, he was the original, oh, God, we can't elect this guy right. candidate before Donald Trump showed up on the scene. And the reason was because of all, all these things would just repel swing voters. It's hard to see what state Ted Cruz would put in play that Mitt Romney lost in 2012. There aren't a lot of them. Senator, would you rather oh Bernie gosh. Sanders run against Ted Cruz or Donald Trump in the fall? Well, actually, uh, either either campaign would be just just fine because uh, Bernie would do very well against <laughs> either. I mean, it's just it's just fascinating to see the dysfunction on the Republican side. I mean, we're fortunate on the Democratic side. We have two very capable candidates uh, who bring forth articulate ideas. Uh, I'm I'm I couldn't be prouder to be a Democrat at this moment. Huh. All right, Senator. Thank you so Senator much for Jeff being with Berkeley, us. Thank you, Josh Green. Thank you as well. Coming up, they have sampled deli sandwiches, Nathan's hot dogs, and matzah. But before the candidates get to primary day, they'll have to survive the New York City press corps. And that story is next when Morning Joe continues. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.